What's up guys, my name is Walton King V from Kawaii Sun Games and in this episode of our FPS tutorial series we are going to be working on weapon pickups. As you can already tell, this is going to be a very insanely long video but we're going to get through it. So let's go ahead and just skip through it, or skip the, skip the intro and get into it. Kawaii? Okay, so jumping into the weapon pickups tutorial. Um, you can see here, I kind of just got a screenshot here, um, and what you see right here, this little red thing, is like, it's like a red weapon, and this is a weapon pickup. Um, so essentially, um, I'm assuming that because it's red, you couldn't actually pick it up, but once it became like full color or some other color, uh, if you were to walk into it, uh, the player who walks into it would then equip the weapon that they just walked into. So this is kind of the thing that we're going to be working on. Uh, concept is a floating gun that when collided with will equip the player with itself and then at the same time the gun must disable itself across the network that means that every client who's connected to the game once one player walks into the weapon it should disable it on all clients uh, so not another so another person couldn't just walk into it uh, the moment after one person walked into it and then re-enable itself after some time t has passed so after so once you walk into it it disables itself and then let's say it has a 30 second cooldown so then after 30 seconds the weapon would be able to be picked back up so it would not be red anymore um, so basically we're going to run through kind of the thought process of how we're going to get this done uh, is we're going to have an empty game object um, and that empty game object is going to spawn a prefab of the assigned weapon data at the start. So uh, the script that we're going to be building is going to take in, um, it's going to be a general pickup script. Uh, you're going to set the weapon that you want to get picked up um, in the script. And then uh, at the start of the game, it's going to create that prefab uh, and have like that floating effect. <laughs> And then uh, this empty game object is going to have a collider and a rigged body, uh, kinematic. And so the collider is going to be a, um, what are they called, a trigger. Uh, and the rigged body will just kind of allow the, um, you know, you put a rigged body on like the parent uh, and that makes it so that all colliders subsequent or, or child to that uh, object will then lead back to logic on that object. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to use on trigger enter to interact with the player and call the player's equip RPC. So once on trigger enter and we've um, confirmed that a player is what just uh, triggered this function, uh, then we're going to then call the equip RPC on that player so that that weapon can show up. And then how we're going to use that, uh, we're going to use the assigned weapon data to know what uh, variables to send through the equip RPC. Uh, and then it's going to use its own RPC to disable itself, which is going to require a photon view. Uh, and it's also going to require using um, mono behavior pun callbacks, which we'll go through. And then has an internal clock that re-enables itself after some time T has passed. Obviously, that's what we were just talking about. So once it disables itself, it'll have its own, let's say, 30 seconds that it comes back. And we don't actually need to create an RPC for that since... All game objects will be disabled at the same time. All of their internal clocks will start at the same time, which means that they'll all re-enable themselves at the same time without having uh, to call another RPC. So let's get into Unity. You can see we're in our um, map here. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start creating this pickup object. So we're gonna create an empty game object, call it pickup. Uh, and then I'm going to come here uh, and, and just create, click on the logo and choose one of these so that we can actually see where it's at. Uh, and I'm going to put it on the ground here. Uh, let's put it like right there. Uh, and then we're going to create um, a 3D cube. And this is going to be the collider. So I just want to be able to see it for now. So then we're going to make it a bit wider. However, water. let's just make like two to two, two, and let's bring it up off the ground. Oh, and then we'll hide the mesh renderer. And there we go. That's a pretty, if we look at that like this, and you can see there's kind of like this like box around it, maybe make it a little bit taller. So let's try three on the Y, bring it up a bit. And so the concept here is that once this, once the player walks into this box, um, we're going to do that on trigger enter. Uh, function. Alright, so now that that's done, uh, we can get rid of the mesh render, we can get rid of the mesh whatever, uh, and then call this the collider, set it to a trigger, uh, and that's all that, that we need to do there. And then on the pickup object, we're going to add in the rigged body. 
Uh, it's not going to use gravity. It is going to be kinematic, and that's just so that um, it can't be really interacted with. Um, and then we're also going to add the photon view. And make sure that your photon view, the owner, is the scene, which means no one, no actual client owns it. That means that every client will have this object. Uh, make sure that this is set to fixed and that the observe option is off and there are no observed components. And then last but not least, um, we are going to make a new script called pickup, which I've already created here, but just right click, create C sharp script, rename it to pickup, and then open up mono develop. And here we are in our pickup script. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do here is just using um, photon.pun. And the reason why is because this will allow us to uh, extend the mono behavior pun callbacks um, class. And then from here, uh, we can then, let's get rid of all this hoopla for now. We don't need any of that. Uh, we want to get a, we wanna define some variables. So public weapon data. Or what is it called? Oh, that's right. We need to actually use our namespace. So using namespace, or not using namespace com dot kawaii sun dot simple hostel. And remember, your namespace is just whatever you've been using. Make sure to keep it constant. Doesn't matter what you use here. This just happens to be what we're using. Com dot kawaii sun dot simple hostel. And this will allow us to grab that weapon data, public weapon. Uh, we're just going to call it weapon. All right. And then let's see. Let's go ahead and add in that on trigger enter. That's 2D. On trigger enter. And then let's check to see if that collider, if other dot attach trigger body dot game object dot tag dot equals player. So if this is a player that is colliding with our, that is entering the trigger, then we're gonna do player, I believe that's the name of our script, player, right? Let's see, yeah, player. And we're just gonna do player controller equals other dot attach rigid body dot get game object dot get component player. <laughs> there we go. So this is going to grab the player script off of the uh, player object that collide that went into the trigger, uh, and then from here, let's go ahead and open up that player script and see what we have for equipping. And we have a way to change weapons yet. We might actually need to create a function on the player that allows us to add a weapon to the player script. Let's see here. Controls. Where is that on weapon? Let's see if that's on weapon. <clears throat> yeah, weapon is on. That's going to be on weapon. So not, not even player. It's going to be weapon. Weapon controller. And we're going to get component weapon. And the reason why is because our loadout, which is what we're going to be altering, is attached to the weapon script, not the player script. That was my bad. I thought it was attached to the player script. Uh, so now we have an equip RPC, but this doesn't actually change the loadout. This just changes what uh, index of the object we're equipping. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function on the player that actually um, adds a weapon to its loadout. So let's do that. Do uh, void pickup weapon. Hmm, interesting. Because we want to pick up the weapon, but at the same time, we need to make sure that... Oh, this just became a lot tougher. Let's see. <laughs> that means we, we need to change the loadout. Um, but the problem with this is we can't send over the whole um, weapon data. So instead, we're going to need some sort of library of weapons. 
Okay. So bear with me. This just became a lot more complicated, but when does it not? Uh, just pawn RPC, pick up weapon, um, and it's going to need some sort of... Um, let's just say it takes in a name of the weapon, and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the weapon from a library, and then um, add that weapon to loadout. So let's go ahead and, uh, the reason why, let me kind of explain why this just got complicated, is because uh, we actually need to have a way that whenever the player walks into this object, that it then um, gives the player the weapon that it walked into, right? Well, the thing is, what we've been doing is the players have been having the, uh, have been all having the same weapons and all been having the same weapon data. Uh, so we haven't been having to actually alter that weapon data. and We've been allowed to assume what weapons the players have been coming into the game with. The problem with that is that when you pick up a new weapon, uh, we have to change the weapons um, on all machines so that it syncs across all uh, systems what weapon the player now has. Now that doesn't seem too complicated, but the reason why it is is because you can't send the entire weapon data because the weapon data includes a prefab and it includes a bunch of data that's unnecessary um, and and you can't actually send a prefab over the network, but it also includes a bunch of extraneous information when all we really need to know is what weapon the player is equipping since every machine should have the data of the weapon on itself. So essentially what we need to do is we need to find a way to send the weapon, at least what weapon the person's getting, and then they need to grab the prefab from their own storage instead of having that entire prefab sent over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send in the name and then we need to find a way to essentially look, use that name to find the weapon uh, data script and then bring that in and then add it to the loadout. So we're gonna do that last. And so before we do that, um, we're going to uh, go ahead and just create what it would be. So we're gonna do like weapon, um, new weapon equals, and we're just gonna create a new weapon. And this is what we're gonna replace using this. Uh, we'll replace this new weapon here when we grab it from the library looking using this name uh, parameter. Uh, and then so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and create the logic that will add that weapon into the loadout. So then we're gonna check to see if loadout dot length is greater than two, then we're going to replace the current weapon. Otherwise, we're just going to add it in. Okay, we'll see since our, we're gonna need to make this a list because we wanna be able to alter it. So list, gun, loadout, there we go. Make, that, make your loadout a list instead of an array. That way we can actually change the size of it. Um, and we're gonna do loadout.count greater than two, uh, or greater than or equal to two, because that's gonna be your maximum weapon count. I mean, you can change this to whatever number you want, but for the most, for you know, ideally it's just gonna be a primary and a secondary. Uh, so if the player has a primary and a secondary already, then we're just gonna replace weapon that we're holding. But if they only have a primary, then we're going to add a secondary. Then we're gonna do loadout dot add. We're going to add new weapon. What is loadout? It's a list of guns. Gun, yeah, my bad, gun, not weapon data. Okay, loadout dot add new weapon. Uh, and then we're going to equip And notice how I don't actually call the RPC equip because we're already in an RPC. So if we call this RPC, uh, it'll automatically do, it'll automatically call equip on every machine since a uh, pickup weapon is being called on every machine. So now we just need uh, an index of the weapon that we're spawning in. So since um, loadout, since we're adding one to, if, since we're adding a gun to loadout, then we're going to equip the index of loadout.count minus one, because that's gonna be the last weapon that we just added in. All right, now we want to handle what if we're already holding, what if this is the max weapon account that we're holding, uh, then we're going to replace the weapon that we're holding, which is going to be loadout, let's see if there's like a value, current index, 
I believe. Let's see. P index, current index. Yeah, so current index holds the uh, current index of the weapon that we're holding. So all we have to do is set loadout current index equals to this new weapon. And then we'll call equip uh, current index. All right, so now all we have to do is create a system that we can actually find the weapon um, that we're equipping from a library. Uh, so what we're gonna do there is we're gonna come back here and we're gonna create a C-sharp script called weapon library or gun library, gun library. Once that is all ready, we'll open it up. <sighs> Reload all and save, yes. Okay. Once this loads and we're ready to go, we're on our gun library. And now essentially all we're going to do here is we're going to have a public, uh, public gun array. We have to put it in the namespace. Namespace com dot sun dot simple hostel in order to be able to access the gun class. So then public gun array, and we're going to call this guns or all guns. And then we're going to have a public static, yeah, public static gun array called guns and then on enable or awake void awake we're going to do guns equals all guns so essentially what this is doing this is allows us to edit all guns in the inspector and then wherever this script is um, all it has to do is run once, so we're gonna have it in our main menu. Um, and all it's going to do is then store static, we're just gonna store all of these guns into a static variable called guns, which we can access from anywhere. Okay, so now once we've done that, um, we're going to create a static function. Find gun, a public static gun, find gun, which is going to take in a string name and it's going to do for each gun a in guns we're going to do uh, if a dot name dot equals name return a uh, and then if it reaches the end and doesn't find anything then it'll just return a new gun sure Okay, or instead to be safer, it can just return guns one <laughs> or gun zero, the first gun in the uh, array. Now to explain everything, uh, essentially what we just do is we created a script that we're gonna put in our main menu. Uh, and then in the main menu, we're going to make sure that we keep all of the guns in our game in this uh, array. And then whenever the main menu starts up, it's going to create a static variable called guns and save all of those guns that you set in the inspector in that script. So now that script doesn't need to be anywhere in the game, anywhere else in the game, because uh, it's stored in our memory. So from anywhere in the game, we can then call this find gun function, which will run through this static script since it's a static function and a static variable. Uh, it'll then run through that static variable, the static array, uh, and it'll look for any uh, gun that has that name. And once it finds it, then it'll return it. So now all we have to do is here, instead of new weapon equals new gun, all we have to do is say new weapon equals gun library dot find gun with that name. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry that was so complicated. Uh, I review that and try to look over that if that is if that didn't make sense hopefully that all made sense to you but if it didn't try to re keep keep doing it until it does uh but yeah so now if we call this rpc all we have to do is send the weapon the name of the weapon that we're picking up and then it's going to then check to see whether or not you have 
uh, the max amount of weapons or not. And if you have the max amount of weapons, it's going to replace the weapon in your hand. And if you don't, uh, then it's going to add that weapon to your loadout. So save that and that. And now all we have to do is actually sync or put that functionality into pickup, right? So we already have weapon here. All we have to do now, and we just grab the weapon controller, so then we just have to do weapon controller dot rpc or dot photon view dot rpc and the name of that function is pick up weapon control c come back here we need to send in the param uh, rpc target dot all and then we need to send in our parameters and our parameters is going to be weapon dot name okay so now what is this going to do once we touch, once we, once the player runs into this collider uh, and it activates the trigger, then it's going to check to see if it is a player. And if it is in fact a player, it's going to grab that player's weapon script. Uh, and then it's going to then call an RPC so that it hits every machine and it's going to tell every machine, hey, this guy just picked up this weapon. Okay. And then once we've done that, all that's left is to then disable this. Uh, and then re-enable it after some time. So we're going to create another quick variable, public float uh, cooldown, and then a private float, uh, or yeah, private float wait, wait. Yeah, that'll work. Public float cooldown, private float wait. And then we're going to create an update function, void update. And then if wait, greater than or equal to zero, then wait, wait minus equals time dot delta time. And then if wait or else, uh, so once wait is all the way, once wait has been depleted, um, then we're going to just say that Ah, I know, we need to create a, we'll create a boolean public, boolean is disabled. Or private boolean is disabled, there we go. Private boolean is disabled and then private float wait. Uh, and then it'll check to see else if, put all of this in if is disabled. We don't wanna do any of this unless the weapon is currently disabled. So if the weapon is disabled, then we're going to check to see if weight is greater than or equal to zero. And if weight is greater than greater than zero, uh, then we're going to subtract time. And once weight is less than or equal to zero, which is else, um, then we're going to re-enable the weapon. So just re-enable. Um, now all we need to do is actually create a disable function. Void disable, not on disable, disable. And then we're going to make this an RPC. So just add the tag pawn RPC to the top. And what this is going to do is it is just going to set weight equal to cooldown and then is disabled equal to true. Weight equals cooldown and is disabled equals true. Um, and then here we're just gonna set is disabled or we'll just call a function called enable. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know what happened. Enable, and I haven't actually created that function yet, but we will. We'll just create a private function, private void enable. I don't know why it keeps doing that. That's gonna do the exact opposite for now. So is disable equals false, and then wait just equals zero. Um, now, of course, obviously you've noticed that this doesn't actually do anything. Uh, so like someone would still be able to walk into this. So then all we need to do then is create a public, let's call it a list of game objects, um, of things that we want to actually change. So we want to, we want these things to be like, let's say they are our, um, I don't know a good word for this, but for now, for the lack of anything else I can think of, we'll call it targets. And then whenever we disable, we'll do for each game object, a in targets, and we're just going to do a dot in a or a dot set active false. And then we'll do the exact opposite in enable. 
we'll set them all back to true. Okay. And then all that's left is to actually call this RPC. So then we've already called this RPC, then we just need to do photon view dot RPC disable and then RPC target dot all. And there's no parameters, so it's good just as it is. Now, when a player walks into the trigger, uh, if it is in fact a player, then it is going to grab the weapon uh, controller script on that player and then cause that player to pick up the weapon um, that we've assigned to this pickup object. After that, uh, it is then going to call the disable function on all machines, uh, which is going to create a cooldown mechanism or turn on our cooldown mechanism, and then it's going to disable all of our objects in our target variable. Uh, so in that case, we could hide like the actual gun uh, and then any other things that we want to like particle effects or um, lighting. All that you could put in targets and it would disable when um, the it's been picked up and it would re-enable itself after the cooldown has been passed. Okay, and then that is it because what we're gonna also make sure is we're gonna make sure that the collider is in that, that target thing. So the last thing that we need to do would be to actually create, we need one more public game object variable or reference. This is going to come to our um, gun display and then on the at start we want to um create a uh prefab of our weapon so we're just going to do um game object new display equals let's uh weapon dot prefab weapon dot what are some of Oh, it's because this is a weapon. It needs to be gun. I don't know why. Yeah, there we go. This needs to be a gun. My bad. My bad, y'all. Y'all probably caught that already. Uh, I'm being dumb. It needs to be a gun. Weapon dot prefab. There we go. Uh, instantiate. Sorry, my brain is all over the place this morning. Instantiate as game object. And then we're going to instantiate weapon dot prefab at uh, gun display dot uh, transform dot position at gun display dot transform dot rotation and gun display is this object that we just defined and it's going to be kind of like the anchor point of where the gun will uh, instantiate uh, something we want to do before this is we just want to do um, for each transform T in gun display dot transform we want to then destroy T dot game object and this will just make sure that if there's anything, uh, that if there's any children already on this gun display anchor, uh, it'll just delete it and then it'll create this new one. And then it's going to then set itself um, new display.transform.set parent. We're going to set that parent to the gun display.transform. And I realize now that this should just be transformed, but that's okay. Uh, and that should be it. So let's save. And because we've done this kind of uh, thing that can delete everything before and we can go ahead and put in um, a test or something that a placeholder gun so that every single pickup object we can see with our eyes um, and then we can that way we can see where we're placing it and then uh, it'll automatically replace itself once the map loads up. So let's save all that make sure we didn't get any errors make sure we're saving every script. Yep, yeah, we're good. Wait for that to compile make sure we don't get any red warning signs we're good um, let's add that pickup script to our object here and then we also going to create an empty called display we're gonna lift the display up a bit to about here or a little bit lower maybe like right there that's gonna be where our display is and we can go ahead and go into our guns folder and drag, like let's say the pistol into display, or actually machine gun into the display. Cause as you can see, there's uh, hands here, right? Um, and that's what's gonna lead me into kind of this next uh, thing is we need to create another folder for displays prefabs, which is gonna be different from the regular gun prefab in that it won't have arms. So 
from this gun prefab, I'm going to come in um, and I'm just going to grab the actual gun. Keep the anchor, delete the arms, right click. First, we have to unpack prefab completely, take the anchor out, delete everything else. Um, let us, or take the sten out, there we go, and delete everything else. Take the stent out, even out of the anchor, take the stent, oh my gosh. Take the stent completely out. Make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. Uh, and there we go, that's perfect. And then we want to create an empty game object. That's going to be the actual stent's parent. And the reason why is because we want the scale to be one, 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 and then bring that in. So now, we have the stem that's at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and it's exactly, it's gonna be the exact same size as the one that you would be holding in your hands. Uh, and then we're going to add this to our displays folder. And we wanna do this with every weapon. Um, for now, I'm only gonna do it with this one. Um, and then in our gun script, and under our scriptable objects, we're going to have just where we have our prefab, we're gonna create one called display. Save that, and then under pickup, instead of adding in the prefab, we're going, or instead of instantiating dot prefab, we're gonna instantiate dot display. Now, I was going to just go ahead and do the prefab for now um, to show you guys that, to show you that there was gonna be a problem we needed to fix it, but I feel like we're running, we're, as usual, we're going way over time here, building this mechanic, and that's fine. Um, and don't be, once again, you can also, don't feel like you need to do all the displays now, especially if you already have a lot of weapons. Just, uh, you can go ahead and just add in the default one for now. Uh, or you can just use, send in the default, uh, like, 3D model uh, as well for all of those. Because now all we have to do is go to our scriptable objects and guns. Uh, and then make sure that we set that, that display thing here. So there we go. I'm going to set, honestly, I'm just going to set all the guns to that display for now. Um, because... I'm lazy. Let's do the same thing for the shotgun. There we go. Okay. So now our gun is in the display and this is our, uh, remember that this is like a placeholder. So when the game actually starts, if we had a different uh, weapon here, uh, it would show the display of that weapon instead of this one. This is just a, um, just a placeholder. We'll set it to 30 seconds. Uh, the gun display is going to be the display child and because that's what it's going to delete the, all the children and then it's going to replace it with the the display prefab under the weapon object and then things that we want to get disabled are going to be the collider and the display we want both of those to get disabled and the example the reason why we have it as that is let's say we actually wanted to also have some sort of um uh cylinder underneath like a podium of sorts and we don't want it to collide with anything. Uh, but let's say we did want some sort of like podium. So then we can actually have some sort of podium here. Um, and since it's not under our targets, uh, variable it would not get disabled so the only things that would get disabled once it's been picked up would be those two things uh, and then once it's re-enabled they would come back but the podium would stay there there we go now we have our pickup script pickup object and the only thing that we need to um, do now remember is to set up that uh, library so for now let's go ahead and save this save project um, make sure we have a photon view on there we do okay and then we're going to go to our menu scene and we're going to create a empty called library or libraries in this case you ever have to create more and then add our gun library and then we're going to just do three go into our gun script we have a machine gun a pistol and then a shotgun there you go save that save project now let's run it see if we have any bugs and if we don't um, we'll call it here. I'll give you like some final things that you guys could add on your own time uh, to kind of work with it.
object reference not set to the instance of an object. So we got an error. Let's see what that error is. Really weird because other attached rigged body. Oh, I guess we have to check to see if it has a, a, a rigged body. So if other dot attached rigged body. So if it does not have one of these or equals null, then return. This is a say, uh, just like a, a fail safe so that if something enters the trigger that doesn't have a rigged body, we don't get an error. So let's save that. Let's try that again. Wait for us to connect. We're connected. Create match. No error this time. Let's run to that pickup. So there you can see the gun. Oh, we need to take it off the gun layer. I forgot. And then we can walk into it. And there we go. Now we <laughs> we just picked up the gun. So in order to make sure to look at that even more, I mean, we were holding a machine gun. So uh, let's go into our resources, our player, and set our current loadout to just be the pistol. So we'll actually delete element zero, delete. So now as you can see, we'll only be holding a pistol. Um, so that'll do that. And then let's take, let's go back to our displays folder and take this off of the gun layer. Yes, yeah, so let's set this, click default. Yes, change children. And then file, save, file, save project. Let's play it. Ah, so much to do. I feel like I'm going super fast, but it's okay. Great match once we're connected. See, we have our pistol. Let's look for that gun, run into it, and then we just picked up the gun. And then you see, as you can see, the gun disappeared and the collider disappeared, so we can't pick it up again, uh, but the podium is still there. So uh, now we're just waiting 30 seconds to see if it spawns back in. And there you go, you see it spawned back in. So then if we walked into it again, see we picked it back up. Okay. So a couple things that we didn't, we're not gonna have time to touch on in this video is like if you wanted to make the gun rotate, you could do that. Uh, you just create an animation on the display. Um, let's see, let's go back to that scene. Uh, on the pickup, just create an animation, uh, or create an animation on the pickup, but make it just rotate the display. So it would just rotate this 180 degrees. Another thing you could do is if you wanted to make it change colors instead of disappear, like it does here, um, you would just, you know, you just create your own, like really you can just have fun with this. Just make sure you maintain the, the basic concept of what it is as of right now. Uh, some other things that you would need to do because like we didn't do here is uh, check to see if the player already has this weapon uh, and then just give them an ammo reef like just max out their ammo or um, you know and then and the, the, the logic is really up to you but make sure that it's not just like they can't pick up two of if you don't want them to pick up two of the same weapon make sure that they can't do that uh, all those kinds of things just make sure you account for but other than that, with what we've done, you should have a very simple, well put together um, pickup script and you can place these around the map now. Uh, and then you can add other logic to them. Like you can make it so that they only show, like right now we have it so that it starts, it shows off at the beginning of the game, but you can have it so it's disabled at the beginning and it's already in a cool down state. So it, it doesn't even show up until like two minutes into the game or stuff. And that's all up to you. We're going to uh, end the tutorial here, so let's get into it. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to have links to the GitHub and the Discord and uh, any other relevant links in the description below, so make sure you go check those out. I'm sorry I'm speaking very fast. I'm trying to end this video because it was a very long video. Uh, but other than that, have a great, beautiful rest of your day, and leave comments below for any suggestions you have towards future tutorial videos. Have a great rest of your day, part two. Uh, goodbye. I'm out.